these fossils come from two deposits, the Dohugo biota and the Jeho biota from northeastern China. These fossils were insects living about 165 million years ago, preserved as fossils in very fine sediment. These beetles are the ancestors of what we call today carrion beetles. The oldest ones known until now were only 40 to 50 million years old. The family of beetles they belong to is called Sylphidae. Today there are just under 200 species of them living on all continents except Antarctica. Both adults and larvae of most species have specializations to feed on carrion or dead animals. Carrion beetles are large, robust beetles that have six segments of their abdomen visible on the underside and have a very distinct club at the end of the antenna that has two special types of tiny sensory organs that are found only in sylphidae. What's fascinating about these fossils is that these characteristics were already present in the Middle Jurassic 165 million years ago, and the fossils are so well preserved that we can see them. For example, in various specimens, we can see details of legs and feet, or tarsi, including even the claws on the tarsi. We can see the six-segmented abdomen, the crabbed antennae, and sometimes the special sensory organs there. Chen Yang is a master's student visiting the Field Museum from the Nanjing Institute of Geology and Paleontology of the Chinese Academy of Sciences. His research is changing our understanding of the evolution of some beetle groups and pushing back the earliest known occurrence of those groups in the fossil record. He has also discovered several structures in the fossils that are not yet well studied or well understood in modern beetles. Margaret is a curator of insects at the Field Museum in Chicago and we are collaborating to try to understand the evolutionary connections between Mesozoic and modern beetles. The outstanding collection of modern sylphidae beetles at the Field Museum, we have all the genera and 83% of all the species in the world, is useful to figure out how fossil carrion beetles compare to the modern ones and whether the changes that have occurred in the group's evolutionary history. Fossils from the Nanjing Institute collection are exceptionally well preserved. It's really extraordinary to be able to look even at details of the antennae of beetles that were alive at the time of dinosaurs and early mammals. On the antennae of some specimens, we can actually see the special kind of tiny sensory organs found only in carrion beetles. These organs are supposed to allow them to detect chemicals from carrion. We can therefore suggest that these carrion beetles fed on dead dinosaurs or small mammals in the Middle Jurassic. If Jurassic sylphids were indeed carrion feeders, like the modern ones, they were probably important natural recyclers 165 million years ago. A more recent fossil from the early Cretaceous has a sound-making structure like that found in one subgroup of carrion beetles. This structure is used by the beetles to communicate with the young or larvae by squeaking. This suggests that 125 million years ago, some carrion beetles might have cared for their young. We're trying to understand the evolution of beetles, putting together the puzzle of life on Earth, using both fossils and modern ones when possible. While looking for answers, though, we always end up with new questions. And that's really one of the exciting things about science. You keep opening up the doors to new rooms to explore. This China and the U.S. collaboration is a valuable opportunity to do research on the complementary and uh, strong collections of unique fossil collections in China and modern beetles at the Chicago's Field Museum. This will help us get a better understanding of beetle evolution. <laughs>